Welcome to Turkish Cuisine. I'm Janine Aloisi, and we're in beautiful Central Park, New York. This show is dedicated to the art of Turkish cooking and Turkish culture. It is our intentions to initiate you into a world where all aspects of Turkish cuisine are explored. We first start in Jennifer's kitchen, where she will introduce to you homestyle traditional Turkish cooking. Let's go to Jennifer and see what she has. and welcome to our kitchen. Turkish people love to eat, and something they love more than the eating of food is the offering of food. It is an important and delicious part of the Turkish culture. From the freshest produce to the most hospitable people, Turkish cuisine is in a league of its own. Today we're going to be making a fun and tasty, delicious array of dishes. My favorite growing up, home-style cooking, for our main entree will be the köfte. The köfte is basically a Turkish meatball, if you want to put it that way. Uh, along with our köfte, we're going to be making a side dish known as the chickpea pilaf or nohutlu pilav. And as our appetizer, we'll be making the shepherd salad or çoban salatası, which many of you may already know. So for starters, we're going to do our köfte and prepare that. We're going to do one pound of ground beef, salt and pepper, of course, to taste half a teaspoon of red pepper, one teaspoon of allspice, half a bunch of parsley, one egg for moisture, and an onion that we're going to grate. Over here, we have some stale bread that I've been soaking in water that is essential to the moisture of the kefta. Now, if you don't have the bread, that's okay. You can use a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Plain is preferable, not the seasoned kind. this, just half a bunch is okay because we only have one pound of beef, and we're going to start chopping. Now it doesn't have to be a fine chop. Now you could use lamb with this as well. Sometimes people like to do half and half. You could do half a pound of lamb, half a pound of beef, and that gives the kefta a really great flavor. Now once you're done chopping your parsley, you could pour it in your pan. Now this is a wide circle-like pan that I use when I make my köfte. It is traditionally used in Turkey because it's really great when you want to knead and mix the meat mixture. You can use a bowl as well, you don't have to use this. Over here we have our bread that has been soaking in water. We're going to take our bread and just squeeze the water out and then put it just in the mixture like so. And then we'll take our onion and start grating it in there. Now, onion is best grated because this way you don't get any of the feeling of the onion, but you still get the great taste. So we'll just do that like this. So that's done right there. And then we can start mixing all of our other ingredients, our egg. That's great. Now, once all of these ingredients are in, you're going to pound and knead the mixture for about two to three minutes. It's very important to mix the mixture well. All köfte in Turkey needs to be mixed and pounded together. Now the reason I use this big flat pan is because it gives me more surface area to pound and knead the meat. You have to pick it up and slap it. This allows the meat to adhere to the ingredients. Make your hands into fists and just pound all the air out of the meat. Now, many köfte, you have to knead the meat. One köfte that is very popular in Turkey is called çiğ köfte, which is a raw köfte, kind of like a tartar, if you will. You have to knead the meat for like 20, 30 minutes. So growing up, my mom always used to let my sister and I knead the meat because we loved it. We loved doing this. It was just so much fun. And it really is fun. You should try it. And just take it and slap it. Just make sure before you do all this that you wash and dry your hands as I have done with mine because cleanliness is very important in a Turkish kitchen as in all kitchens. Remember, you're feeding your family and your loved ones, so keep it clean. Now we're going to mold our little meatballs into shapes and lay them flat on a platter. 
which is very easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do it. You're going to section off in small portions little balls of meat, roll them up like a log, and then mold flat with your hand. So a great trick for this is, if your hands are pretty dry, which mine aren't, but if they are, you can dip your finger in a little bit of olive oil or some water to help get the meat rolling off your hands better. So we're just going to do that. Now, we're going to grill these on a non-stick pan, but if you wanted to fry them, now would be the time to pat them in flour, front and back. Now while I'm getting our köftes ready, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we have a lot of things in store for you. A nohutlu pilau and shepherd salad because no Turkish dish isn't complete without a great appetizer and salad. So don't go away. Did you know the culinary center of Turkey is the Marmara region? And Istanbul is its queen city. It's where east meets west. And because of this location, all the treasures of the world can flow right in. Our travel video will take you there. Istanbul is Turkey's largest city. It's the heart of Turkey's business and cultural life. The country's largest port and home to more than 12 million people. Byzantium had a superb location on the Bosphorus, the broad strait that connects the Black Sea with the Sea of Marmara and the Aegean. Roman Emperor Constantine I chose Byzantium as his new imperial capital. He ordered his builders to construct a great city of wide boulevards, spacious public squares and grand palaces. It was designated as the New Rome in 330 AD and named after him, Constantinople. Two centuries later, in 537 AD, Emperor Justinian the Great inaugurated his greatest building project, the Church of the Holy Wisdom, or Hagia Sophia. Set on a hill overlooking the Bosphorus, right where the pagan temple of Byzantium once stood, the great church was the largest and most magnificent building in the entire world at the time. The Byzantine Church of the Holy Saviour of Incora, built in the 11th century, is very different. A small, beautifully decorated church that was built as the centre of a monastic complex. Located near the city's massive land walls, it boasts the finest Byzantine mosaics in the entire region. The frescoes in the Paraclesian Chapel were the product of a new Byzantine art movement which paralleled the Italian Renaissance. The church is now a museum. Near Hagia Sophia was the city's Hippodrome, a place for public games, tournaments, chariot races and special events. Along its spina, or central dividing line, are the great relics of the past, an Egyptian granite obelisk brought by ship from the Nile, a bronze serpentine column once topped by three serpent heads. The Column of Constantine, which in Byzantine times was covered in plates of gleaming bronze. The armies of Sultan Mehmet II conquered the imperial city in 1453, putting an end to the Byzantine Empire. The Ottoman sultans beautified their new capital constructing great buildings that rivaled those of the Byzantines. The Blue Mosque, built by Sultan Ahmed I in 1616, was set next to Hagia Sophia so that people could compare the two artistic achievements. The Sultan endowed his great imperial mosque with many other buildings to serve the people fountains, a health clinic, a soup kitchen for the poor, a Turkish bath, a theological seminary, living quarters, shops and storehouses. Topkapi Palace, known as the Seraglio to Europeans, was the home of the imperial family, 
and the centre of the Empire's government. Constructed between 1465 and 1478, it was expanded and modified dozens of times over the next four centuries. It is a beautiful, livable place of gardens, pavilions and sumptuous royal chambers. Many of them are decorated with priceless Turkish tiles. The most popular section of Topkapi is the Imperial Harem, legendary for its luxury, romance and intrigue. Mozart wrote his famous opera, The Abduction from the Seraglio, about it, and many other artists have let their imaginations fly with visions of what went on there. Located on major trade routes, Istanbul has always been an important commercial city. The Grand Bazaar, with its 4,000 shops, is among the world's most fascinating markets. It's truly a small city in itself. Nearby on the Golden Horn is the Egyptian, or Spice Bazaar, known in Ottoman times as the place to buy exotic spices and herbs to be used in cooking or as traditional medicines. Crowning a hill overlooking the city is the Suleymaniye, or Mosque of Sultan Suleyman the Magnificent, the largest of Turkey's imperial mosques. Built for the empire's greatest sultan, it is the masterwork of Mimar Sinan, Turkey's greatest architect. Welcome back to our kitchen. If you're just joining us now, we've prepared our köfte, which is a Turkish meatballs, a favorite in Turkish cuisine. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator now while we get ready to make our nohutlu pilau, or chickpea rice. Because if we cook it now, we, are, we don't want it to cool down. We want everything to be hot at the same time. So I'm just going to put it in the fridge while we start preparing our delicious nohutlu pilau, or chickpea pilau. Now I'm going to tell you the ingredients for our delicious chickpea pilaf. For two to three servings, we need three tablespoons of butter, four ounces of chickpeas, eight ounces of rice, four ounces of chopped onion, salt to taste, and two cups of boiled water or chicken stock or beef stock for flavor. and cooked for 45 minutes or until tender. But if you're in a rush for time, you could get the ones in the can, that's fine. So first we're gonna put in our butter. We put in the butter and our onions. Let that soften up a bit. Okay. And then add our chickpeas. Mm, hear that sizzle? You can even smell the onions. Delicious. And now we're going to put in our rice and we're going to throw it back and forth so we brown them. It's very important to get them a little brown. And then once you see they're brown, we're going to pour in our boiling chicken stock that I have boiling over here. So we'll just brown this. Now there are so many different types of rice, so many different variations, it's hard to choose a favorite. You can make it with bulgur, you can make it with vegetables, you can make it with chicken, you could put eggplant in it. Some people even put tomato paste. Some people mix in the bulgur with the regular rice. I mean, it's just, it's infinite, really infinite. The reason I chose this one is because it actually has a lot of history. Uh, apparently, in the Topkapa Palace, Mahmud Pasha, who was Grand Vizier to Mehmet the Conqueror, on Fridays used to invite the ministers over for lunch. Now, he would have his goldsmith put in little gold balls into the dish to resemble the chickpeas. And he would do this so that when the ministers ate, and if they put their fork into the gold, it would bring them good fortune. Not always, but it was one of his favorites. So now this seems pretty good and browned, nice and boiling. And we're gonna pour it in there. Oh, you hear that sizzle? And we're gonna let this soak up all the water. Oh, you can even smell the onions. This is going to go so great with our köfte. 
So when this comes to a boil, we're going to put the lid back on and then lower the heat so it lets it simmer for about 20 minutes or until all the water is soaked up. So this is done. We'll put that on top of here so the boil comes up quicker. And now we're going to start with our delicious shepherd salad. start chopping the ingredients for our shepherd salad while our chickpea pilaf is cooking the back. This can be made with traditional ingredients found in any Turkish home or garden. It's very famous and it can be eaten with many of the dishes, especially what we're making today, our köfte. And we're going to start off by telling you the ingredients. So for two to three servings, we need two tomatoes, quarter of a bunch of parsley, one cucumber, one red onion, one pepper, and of course salt and pepper to taste. I like to add a little sumac in it. It's an Indian spice. It gives it a nice sour flavor. We have two tablespoons of lemon juice, a splash of red wine vinegar, and of course olive oil and some olives to garnish because olives are very versatile and it's great. It's the fruit of turkey. Black, green, any type is great. So let's start by chopping our tomatoes. So we have our tomatoes that are washed and dry. We're going to start by chopping the tomato. Now the tomato, make sure when you go to the produce section that you don't choose one that's too hard. You want one that's just the right consistency to give it a nice flavor. So this can be made in many different variations. You can do it with or without the pepper. You can add a chili pepper for spice. You could add a little less parsley without the simac or without the red wine vinegar. This is the way that I've learned how to make it. And now we're going to take some parsley. Now it doesn't matter what order you do the chopping in. Of course, obviously, you just want to make sure you do the dressing last. Now you can cut off and throw away the end of the parsley. So just get a little fine chop in there. And then we'll take our cucumber. Now this is the Kirby cucumber, but any cucumber is fine. Just peel it like so. And sometimes if you leave the skin on it, it's good, you know, because it gives it a little bit of a different flavor and it's not too bitter as well. So you could just cut it like that. So once you're done chopping, you can put everything in the bowl. Now salad is very important to Turkish cuisine. With almost every meal, you could find some type of salad variation, either lettuce or spinach or arugula. But the choban or shepherd salad is the most popular and really goes great with our köfte or any type of kebab. And it's healthy because you have all the tomatoes, which has lots of antioxidants and vitamins. So now I'm just cutting the pepper, and then we're going to do our onion. Now we have a red onion right now for color, but if you don't have red, that's okay. You can use white, or even you can use some scallions. Scallions are great, and if you want, you can even do scallions and the red pepper. This dish is very versatile, and people make it according to their preference. So right now I'm going to take the red onion, and the onion does not have to be sliced that fine. It's nice if it's long and lean and mixed up in there. So just kind of elongate it like this and then you could just break it up. Because it's good when you're tossing it like so. So now we're going to start making our dressing, which is really easy. I like to make our dressing separately in a bowl and then pour it over. It just gives it spread out a little bit more. So we have two tablespoons of lemon juice. We got extra virgin olive oil because that's just the best and it goes with the salad and plus this is going to be also two tablespoons. So like that. Of course I just use my eye because you get used to it. Now a splash of red wine vinegar. Not everybody does it. A lot of restaurants do. Sumac gives it a great flavor. 
I remember when I was in Turkey, we went to um, Beolo, which is a great area for shops and cafes. And um, add our salt. The choban salatasa over there it was just, it was really mouth watering. And it was great. We ended up pouring the salad over our kebab and kefta and ate it in a sandwich, like a pita bread. So, see, now we're gonna mix it all up. Oh, it smells really good. Ah, oh, you're gonna love this. This is great. And if you have any leftover, don't throw it away because it's great the next day. It's not like regular salad where it gets soggy. This one soaks up all the olive oil and the juices, and it's just, it's really great. So you're gonna trust me on that. So, all right, now we have that. I'm just gonna get our tray over here. Make everything look pretty. And I'm just gonna pour it like so. Now, if you want to make extra, you want to add anything, you could just add more cucumbers and tomatoes. You don't need to add all the other stuff because the other stuff is really just for a little bit of flavor. And now we're going to garnish with a little bit of black olives. Now, some restaurants like to garnish with some lemon wedges, but we've already used lemon juice, so I'm not going to do that here. Also, you can always order this with some feta cheese, either on top or on the side. And um, actually, we're going to check on our chickpea pilaf that's cooking. The aromas are coming to me from behind. And then when we come back, we're going to cook our kiftas. So don't go away. Now we go to Turquoise, a restaurant located on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Its decor is unique in that it has tinted rooms which are reflective of the Ottoman Empire. Let's go in and see for ourselves. My name is Ahmed Atulgan. Uh, a long time ago, I came to the United States. Uh, uh, originally, I am from uh, Ankara. I was working in uh, Terete. Then I stay here. And then we decided uh, June 2000, we opened this restaurant with my partner. And we continue. This is Turquoise. We are located at 2637 Broadway, which is corner of 100th Street West Side. We have about like 50 tables. It's about, we can serve at the same time like 200 people. There is something special about the Turquoise. It's the atmosphere decoration. It's kind of when you get inside, it takes you like a feel like you're in the tent. The thing is, like uh, in New York City, there are like thousands of restaurants, and everybody believes that they they do the best food in town. I mean, whenever you go, wherever you go, it's like you see uh, big advertisements. It says the best uh, fish in town, the best food in town, something like that. But the thing is, Turkas not only differs because the food is so good, but other than that, I mean, the atmosphere is so unique. It's like uh, the whole restaurant is designed as an Ottoman tent, a 17th century Ottoman tent. Six years ago when I came to New York, there, were like, there was like just a couple of Turkish restaurants over here. So people were like just getting what you serve. Like uh, because there, there's like few Turkish restaurants, they weren't sure what really Turkish food is. But now in like six years, everything changed. Now there are like tens of Turkish restaurants and actually people know what they are getting. I have a many years experience. 30 years ago I am started in Hilton, Istanbul. I love cooking. There is only one secret, I love this job.
American people, they love Turkish food. Uh, they love uh, everything about Turkey. So many different dishes that I tried in Turkey and I would still like to try that I didn't get a chance to try. Um, there's so many fresh um, fruits and vegetables that um, are prepared in very unique ways um, in Turkey. I like jajuk a lot. It's with the yogurt and cucumbers. Put a little salt in there. It's really good. The food in Turkey is just spectacular. Now our chickpea pilaf is just about ready. What we need to do now is take a paper towel and place it under the lid. This allows the paper towel to absorb all the water and get that rice really nice and steamed. So we're going to let this steam for about 15 minutes while I get my nonstick pan ready to cook our kefta. Now that we've waited for our non-stick skillet to get really nice and hot, we're going to place the keftas and start cooking them. Now, I don't use any oil because the kefta has fat in it and it has its own oils. But if you wanted to fry this, you could use one cup of sunflower oil. And remember, as I said before, pat them in flour. But I'm just grilling them because it's much healthier. And actually, traditionally, this has been made on top of an open fire. So doing it in a skillet is the closest way to getting it the traditional style. Don't be afraid to get in there. Move them around. After a while, your fingertips become immune to the heat anyway. You cooks out there, you know what I'm talking about. This actually reminds me of a time when I was with my sister, we were in Turkey on vacation with my cousins. We went to Sultan Ahmet, which is basically the old historical Istanbul. If you ever go to Turkey and you want to start your vacation, this is a great place to start your sightseeing. And across the street, we went to the Sunken Palace, which is Yerebatan Sarnıcı. It's actually a cistern, one of the oldest and largest in Istanbul. It could carry 21 million gallons of water, and it has over 300 gorgeous marble columns. Actually, if you remember the movie uh, from Russia with Love, the James Bond movie, there's a scene where James Bond is rowing a boat through a forest of beautiful marble columns. That scene was actually filmed there. So anyway, so we went, and after all this sightseeing, we were starving, and when we left, my cousins, of course, they wanted to take us to a cafe because there's so many great cafes and restaurants over there. But my sister and I, we were just so hungry, we couldn't wait. So we went to one of those street vendors and my cousins got kokoreç, which is famous in Turkey on the street. Everybody eats kokoreç. But my sister and I really wanted the kefta. And the gentleman over there, he put the kefta in like a pita pocket. He would put some raw onions, like seasoned onions and a little bit of a tomato. And even in that summer heat, it's like you felt the coolness of the tomato, the crispiness of the onion, and the juiciness of the kefta. And it was, it was really mouth-watering. It was to die for. So even if you go to Sultan Ahmed and you don't have time to go to the cafes, know that you can go to the street vendors. It's great, and it's inexpensive, and it's very healthy and clean. Now it looks like our keftas are just about ready. You want to wait until they get nice uh, golden brown on both sides, make sure they're cooked well. And we're going to shut this off and bring it over with our chickpea pilaf and put it on our serving platters. So let's get ready to do that. And now we're getting ready for the best part, eating. But before we eat, you have to place them gently on the pretty serving platter. So as you can see here, I've taken my serving platter and I've garnished it with some curly lettuce. Uh, but you could use anything. You can use tomatoes, you can use uh, regular lettuce, romaine lettuce. But I had the curly at home, so I like to utilize what I have in my kitchen. Okay, so now we're going to start placing our chickpea pilaf on our serving platter that I have that matches the one for the köftes. Place it here. Now to garnish this, a great way to garnish is radishes. 
What you can do is cut the radishes, slice them open, and soak them in water for about 15 minutes. That way the radishes open and they look like a little rose, like a flower. So it's really pretty when you put it on the middle. And it smells great. See how it's just so flaky? And the chickpeas really stand out. And then you could see how that story I was telling you about Mahmoud Pasha, how he would put the gold pieces in because it would match the chickpeas. I would like to go to that dinner. Now that our chickpea pilaf is on the platter, we're going to garnish with a little bit of parsley. We'll stick that in right there. And don't go away because the best part is coming up. We're going to make some sumac and ayran to wash this all down. Ayran is the most famous drink from Turkey and you're going to be really excited to try it. So don't go away. We'll get back to Jennifer's kitchen in a bit. Next we'll meet Michael Rogel, a professional photographer from New York City. A few years back he had a chance to visit Turkey and enjoy the culture while sampling a variety of different dishes. Our TV crew had an opportunity to interview with him. Let's go and watch the clip. trips for uh, four or five years and we went to England first and then we went to France and we went to Italy and found that after the initial amazement at being in a different culture where they spoke different languages you were in the West everything in the United States is of Western derivation and they draw a lot off of American culture and we wanted to do something different and Turkey was the border. Turkey was where East met West. And so we researched a trip there. It was great experience, it was really cool. I was told before I went to Turkey that uh, Turkish cuisine was one of the great cuisines of the world. And when we were waiting at the airport for the plane, we met uh, people who were going back to school from, from Turkey. And this kid was telling me, he was about 16 years old, he was telling me about halapajan. He's telling me, we have this Turkish pizza. It's like, it's great. It's like got lamb on top and they bake it in an oven and it's called lamajan and it's like, you really have to go and, and, and try it. And I said, well, do they call it lamajan because there's lamb on top? And he said, no, no, that's just the name. It's just like, it doesn't have anything to do with it. It's Turkish. It's like lamb isn't lamb in Turkish. So, um, you know, that was my first <laughs> introduction. And of course we knew about the kebabs and, and uh, you know, the roasted meats in general. We didn't know about pee days, and we made up songs about uh, baby want a pee day, baby want a pee day, and mama want a lamajan, and mama want a lamajan. But uh, we ate them all. It was really cool. There were some wonderful, you know, wonderful yogurt dishes, wonderful uh, eggplant, patlajan dishes. You know, uh, Imam Bayaldi was one that comes to mind. It's like somebody said, it's like the M.M. fainted, and, and we always thought it was like, it was so good, <laughs> the M.M. fainted, so every time we take a bite, we'd go like this. But apparently it's called M.M. Bialdi because there was so much oil used in it, the M.M. fainted, but I didn't know about that at the time. We really loved the food, it was great. Uh, there was a restaurant in, uh, in Kalkan, uh, they had really wonderful kebabs. Uh, John Le Carré had eaten there and written about the place. I guess John Le Carré isn't his real name, but he's pretty famous as the author of all the spy novels, finally came in from the cold. The amazing thing about the food in Turkey was the markets. You go in these incredibly colorful markets with a million kinds of olives and a thousand kinds of spices, different colors. It just, it, it was like delightful to smell and delightful to see. And, and the pictures are all, it was in film. We were shooting in, in film, and there were vacation pictures that we were taking. Although, you know, photography was both my and my wife's profession at the time, my wife's changed profession since then. Uh, we took a film camera and, you know, just took, you know, vacation pictures. And the film would pick up these hues of, uh, of red because of the tense 
and the reflection of the light and everything was just like a really rich color in the photographs. But just even to the eye, you know, in, uh, I guess it was in a goop, there was a market and the spice market was amazing. The spice market down by uh, the Golden Horn, I guess that's Emanuno down at the bottom uh, by the Sultanahmet Quarter, by the station, by the train station. You know, it was really astounding, and and the meats roasting and stuff. We had a wonderful time. We are, we had a wonderful tummy time. <laughs> New York is this incredible place. You know, there are over uh, what seventeen thousand restaurants. You'd have to eat out every day for like fifteen or twenty years. But there aren't that many Turkish restaurants. There are some out in Brooklyn Avenue U that we've uh, we've gone to, and there are some in uh, Manhattan. There's Ship Shack. There's uh, Turkish Kitchen. It was an amazing trip, all things considered. It was a wonderful exposure to a different world. And different than the same. I mean, as you get farther east, people are, you know, it's more conservative Muslim population, but you get to the south and to the coast, they're Mediterranean resorts, just like anywhere in, you know, along uh, Italy or France or anything like that. It's like, you know, so it's a big mix and it was a wonderful, wonderful trip. Now we're almost at the end of our famous home-cooked Turkish dinner. I'm really excited for you to try it and I'm excited to eat it as well. We're going to make our Iran drink, but before we get to that, we're going to make what's called sumak. Sumak is raw onions and you can use red or white. I'm going to utilize what we had left over from our previous dishes, because we love to utilize whatever is in our kitchen. And all you do is slice them and add some sumak spice. That's all it is. Now this is eaten raw with many of the meat dishes. This is also great with what's called lehmacun, which is like Turkish style pizza, which maybe one day we'll get to. And it doesn't have to be sliced too finely because you want them to dance around in the bowl. We'll just take our bowl and all you have to do is add the sumac spice. And mix it up with a fork and that's it. We'll just finish mixing it up and that's it, that's done. So we'll leave that so we can garnish our plate with it. And now we're gonna make our iron, really easy. One cup of plain yogurt in the bowl. One cup of ice water. And a little bit of salt. Now not everybody likes the salt. Traditionally, salt is used. And you just mix it up. And now yogurt goes great with many of the dishes in the Turkish cuisine. Goes great with kefte. It's great for digestion. And they even say that sometimes yogurt helps you sleep better at night. It's rich in the vitamins and the minerals. So we need to mix this very well so that there's no lumps left at the bottom. So it's very important to just mix it and let it blend with the water. So then once you think you've got it all mixed together, just pour it in the cup. And there you go, you have your ayran. So now we have our ayran, world famous Turkish drink. Goes great with all of our dishes, especially what we made for tonight. And our sumak, onions with the sumak spice. Now we've come to the end of our meal. I've worked up an appetite. I hope you have too. I can't wait to eat all this. We have a mouth-watering shepherd salad, a delicious chickpea pilaf, and an all-time favorite, kefte. But that's not all. There's still so much more to Turkish cuisine. The possibilities are endless. Join me here next week at the same time, and we'll cook up something together. Afiyet olsun. Well, that was Turkish Cuisine. Thanks for watching the show, and I'm sure you learned a few interesting things about Turkish cooking and Turkish culture. I'm Janine Aloisi, and I'll see you next week at the same time.